just wanted to let you know that I've been meaning to get on here and a couple of different things have come up and I've been watching the a little bit of the confirmation hearings and I was I was looking at uh, you know Trump's just gotten out of the hospital for COVID and I just was scratching my head and I was thinking about high blood pressure and why didn't he have it and I was also talking with a friend of mine who had a unfortunate thing happen to their dad and I was talking with somebody about their ACE inhibitors and why they should take them they were prescribed ACE inhibitors so I kind of wrote down I was going to do a whole thing on blood pressure the silent killer and disabler and I really do want to talk about that but I want to make it short and sweet but there's a lot more to the story than meets the eye. Each and every one of us is unique and we respond differently to treatments and it's best to discuss with your doctor and have a good working relationship with your doctor but some people don't trust their doctors that much or follow their doctors orders and they think they know better. So anyway if you do want to take your health into your own hands you have a choice right? Most of the time you do. Now, ACE inhibitors are working a certain way, and so I actually looked this drug up that this person was complaining about, and I got to thinking about the silent killer and how serious it is. So I thought I'd just talk about it since I'm in health psychology, right? And I put all this stuff together so that you can look at it. Now, it is based on getting your blood pressure is based up as as a health psychologist we, we look at the mind-body connection and we also look at alternative medicine as well and we look at uh, different studies and we we can't prescribe medicine uh, you'd have to go to an MD but we look into it we can do things like hey your autonomic nervous system is involved here your you know, type A personality is going to tighten up your veins more. Um, being overweight is going to cause problems. So we're looking at trying to work on somebody's health behavior and help them make choices that are going to be proactive about their health. Like, you know, maybe lose some weight. Well, that's easier said than done. It's easier said than done to get enough potassium every day, and you need enough potassium to keep your blood pressure from going up. Well, that requires you have a diet rich in potassium-rich foods. Now, I don't know what your kidneys are like. Your MD would know what your kidneys are like. So here's the long and short of it. These ACE inhibitors do have side effects. There's no question about it. They cough they cause some people to they they actually act on the veins to help the veins open up they're very good at doing that it takes about two weeks to work uh, to really bring them down normally and but there's other ways to bring your blood pressure down but it takes a lot of self-discipline and the thing is if you're very overweight and you're not getting enough potassium maybe it's just better to take a pill you know and so let me just tell you these case stories or people I know and let you know that it's really important to get your blood pressure in the sweet spot so you don't have something happen but it's not a hundred percent guarantee because there's other independent intervening causes that can cause somebody to have uh, a serious thing like a car accident or a serious health problem like it you know there's there's other things that cause it but hey the blood pressure medicine can keep you calm so anyway so back to me saying Trump why doesn't why doesn't Trump have high blood pressure he's o overweight according to all the charts well let me get to him and then I'll go back to these case studies of three people I know three different scenarios so I couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around it. D doesn't it automatically mean that if you're if you're overweight you're gonna have high blood pressure it just it 
it goes together like white on rice, peanut butter and jelly. You know, it just happens that way. Your weight goes up, your veins get more pressure on them, you're going to have high blood pressure in most cases. Why does Trump miraculously have it? Does he have more muscle? What's going on with him? So I started looking at articles, and I found an article saying that Trump's on four medicines. He's on a, a medicine for rosacea. Actually, a lot of people in my family have that. It's um, it's an inflammation on the skin. And some people think it might be tied to infections. Some think, people think it might be tied to mites, Demodex mites. But I'm not going to go into rosacea right now. Taking the aspirin. Aspirin actually raises your blood pressure if you take a normal dose, but he's taking a low dose to thin his blood a little to help with flow. Well, some people can't. I can't take aspirin. If I take aspirin, I'll, I might have an asthma attack. So I, I'm sensitive to NSAIDs. Um, so each person's different. So don't follow what Trump's doing just because Trump's doing it. Hey, I think I'll do that. No. Talk to your doctor. Find out. So I'm like, why isn't Trump having high blood pressure? He's even on a cholesterol lower medicine. Well, it turns out he's taking a medicine for hair thinning, right? Propecia. Here, let's do a quick search. Trump on Propecia. Um, this is the thing, okay? You can you can Google this yourself. Um, by the way, I just set this on dark because a lot of t I don't I'm sensitive to light. I've got blue eyes, and they're sensitive to light. Um. So my, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so Trump is taking Propecia. Propecia lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your testosterone. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to close that real quick. There's plenty of articles out there. You can look it up yourself. But I was, I was looking at these drugs that the doctors prescribe now. They have pharmaceutical companies that want to make money. Well, America lets drugs through that other countries won't let, let through. They let chemicals through that they, other countries don't. Like, for example, bromine or bromide is a chemical they put in breads and baked goods all across America. But other countries have banned it because it lower it causes cancer, it does all this other stuff, it lowers your iodine, it causes thyroid disorders, but hey, it's legal in the United States. So Trump is taking this propacious stuff, and by the way, this is not medical advice. The there are side effects. This can affect your mood. This can affect your there there's all these little nuanced things going on with these medicines. That's why it's so important to try to get your health and really work on your health in a way that you don't have to take this stuff. Now, you know, if somebody is not as in touch with their feelings or they're not going to a psychologist, I highly recommend you get a good doctor and you get a good psychologist or therapist if you have, you're dealing with like emotions and stuff, but so let me jump back over to these three case studies. I've talked enough about Trump. I will say the medicines he's, he's on, even though he's not taking a blood pressure lowering medicine, quote, quote, uh, quote, unquote, the medicine he's taking, and I, I'm, I'm assuming it's for hair loss, okay? You'll have to look at the article why he's taking, but it lowers your blood pressure. That's one of the side effects. Just like there's medicine... Um, that has a side effect, you're going to lose your hair. There's medicine, there's a side effect, you grow more hair. And I think one of the reasons they don't like to use that medicine for blood pressure is because maybe it's going to make women grow facial hair. I don't know. I don't know what, what all the reasons they decided you, you can't prescribe that for blood pressure. 
but it does lower male testosterone and it can cause sexual dysfunction problems and uh, it can cause for a layperson's term you know man boobs so I, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube but so it doesn't cause exactly gynomastia which is the other technical name but I'm trying to talk in layperson speech because um, most people don't know the technical terms and it's just easier to say it because there's more than one way to say something so with the blood pressure it's really serious you got to take uh, medicine to lower it and usually if you get overweight you're gonna get to a point where your blood pressure will go up so it's good to stay this is why it's good to stay in the sweet spot of your weight exercise also helps and so does enough potassium magnesium right foods now as complementary alternative medicine health psychologists we look into herbs and different things like that meditation other ways besides pharmaceuticals that are natural ways but they're not as strong for example hibiscus tea it's an ACE inhibitor but you have to take and it's very hard to control natural substances for their strength and it's very expensive so it's cheaper to have this ACE inhibitor but if you buy organic hibiscus pills that are uh, made they, they sometimes concentrate them and distill them they're extremely expensive and only wealthy people can afford this sometimes they want to have something more natural you know the hibiscus tea has iron and vitamin C in it and all kinds of other co-occurring not co-occurring but other other healthy things for you so but the ACE inhibitor isolates this uh, chemical in your body to open up your veins a little bit just gently you know but and depending on the dose so the doctor will do that and it's important to take your medicine and this is why it's important to take your medicine if you don't take your medicine and your blood pressure is too high and you get worked up in any way you could have a catastrophe and I'm gonna tell you I know a man who did not like his medicine didn't like the way it felt didn't like the side effects I guess he had a cough and he uh, was working out and losing weight but he was crash dieting and he went to the gym and he collapsed on the floor they rushed him to the hospital he had a hemorrhagic stroke in his brain now he's in his in a wheelchair wearing adult diapers and he's having trouble moving his arms and his legs and he can't his feet are like curled up and um, it's very sad he's in his 50s and he wasn't really super obese he was just mildly obese okay so but one thing they did discover is uh, that he had developed um, type 2 diabetes but he, according to his family members he was going to regular doctor visits but just decided he didn't like the side effects of the medicine and he wanted to try to just lose weight and get off the medicines and now he's in the hospital this other one uh, kept complaining that she had felt like she was rotting from the inside out that she got lots of aches and pains she'd go on and off the medicine she'd go back to the doctor ask for different medicine the doctor would tell her to lose weight and stop you know doing stuff that causes her to gain weight and everything make her and I don't know what's gonna happen to her but this person is um, their family member was talking with me about it and I'm like talk, talk go back to the doctor well they their insurance isn't going to cover the doctor and all this other stuff so I don't know but I'm telling you that some of the, and they said they looked up that the, the medicine that the doctor had them on was associated with cancer and I started looking for articles to prove her wrong and I did find some saying that 
um, after five years on this medicine, and then I saw message boards where people were complaining about the particular medicine she had. I'm not going to say which one it is, but it's a general ACE inhibitor. So long and short of it, the verdict's not out on that. But the thing is, if you you if you don't take your medicine, you could wind up like this guy did. You know, and then the other one is this mother that I know went very slowly on an exercise and diet regime. She had high blood pressure and she lost 35 pounds and got into the normal range. But she did it over a two year period and she took her medicine and went to her regular checkups every three months. And the doctor told her, you can get off the medicine now. She got down to a really low dose and was slowly weaned off of it. That's the way I suggest you do it. Anyway, that's the long and short of it. Thanks for listening. I'm going to put this in a health, psychology, physical health playlist and start one on that. Always try to get a good relationship with your doctor. And if doctors are just people, there's a lot of different kinds of personalities. Try to find one that, you know, is going to do it. If you want it, if you really, you've got to be careful. That's all i got to say. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.